Um, so workplace health and safety is important in all work locations, uh, including in outdoor industries. Um, and the purpose of workplace health and safety um, policies and procedures and legislation is all around keeping the employees and the employers safe in their particular chosen work field. Um, it covers a range of different policies and procedures as well as the competency standards that should be expected in that particular industry. Now we're going to talk a bit about policies and procedures in relation to the outdoor industry, in particular in terms of abseiling as an outdoor activity. So if we think about a policy, um, policies are generally about um, the organisation's thoughts on a particular issue, so describe their position or their stance on a particular issue. And it kind of covers the why um, around an issue to do with workplace health and safety. And there's lots of different examples of policies that you'll see within um, outdoor organisations. So you'll see policies around um, risk management, around how risks in different outdoor activities should be managed. You'll also see policies around what to do um, in emergency responses. Uh, and you'll also see policies around the identification of hazards and reporting of hazards. So policies are all about the why and give a description of that um, company or organisation's views on a particular issue. Uh, the next part of um, uh, workplace health and safety is to do with procedures. So the policy, if that's the why, the procedure is the how, that's the steps that a company has outlined that their employees will take. Um, to address the risks or the issues that are covered within the policy. So if we have a policy on risk management, then the procedure for risk management are the steps that the employer or the employee is going to take um, when identifying risk and managing that within an outdoor activity. And within the outdoor industry, there are lots of different procedures that might be there. You may have procedures around safe manual handling, you could have procedures around risk management or even emergency responses. So the steps that would be taken if an emergency were to occur. Um, at Wodonga TAFE, um, in relation to abseiling, we have our standard operating procedures. Um, and this is a really clear document that outlines exactly the steps that are taken when conducting abseils, whether that's for students or um, future leaders, or for new novices who've never abseiled before. Um, so things that are covered within these procedures can include safe working um, distances from cliff environments, the steps that are taken when conducting an abseil, all of the safety checks that are involved at the different stages of the abseil, as well as how equipment is going to be maintained and cared for as well as stored. So that covers policies and procedures. Uh, we also have competency standards that come in with workplace health and safety. And whilst uh, competency standards are typically not legally binding, most companies will tend to use these um, as they're often an industry standard that is an expected practice for particular activities. Um, in outdoor activities, we have most of our competency standards come from the Australian Adventurous Activities Standards, um, the AAAS and this outlines a lot of different aspects of outdoor activities and it will be very clear and specific about what is good practice or best practice for that activity. If we consider abseiling as our activity, the good practice guide um, from the AAAS is going to include things like the um, appropriate care and selection of equipment as well as how equipment needs to be maintained and used. It's going to cover things like participant ratios to leader ratios when running an abseil activity. It'll cover things to do with the selection of natural environments, as well as um, what weather conditions are appropriate to abseil in. So it's a very specific document that outlines exactly uh, what this um, industry standard board considers to be best practice for that activity. And these guides exist for a wide range of different outdoor activities. So in abseiling or rock climbing, um, there are a number of policies and procedures that need to be followed every time, which we've talked about already. And some of those policies and procedures you can see here in action within the Wodonga Tafe um, abseiling or rock gear shed. So one of the records that we will be keeping is we'll be keeping a, a register of all materials that we have for our um, abseiling and our rock climbing 
we're going to have the date that they were manufactured and put into service, um, as well as any issues that have occurred at inspections that will occur on a yearly basis or as recommended by the manufacturer. This will give us an idea of the usage of that piece of equipment um, and how long it has been in service for, so make sure that we don't exceed any of the manufacturer's recommendations. Which for helmets and harnesses is typically 10 years of standard usage, but given that gear here gets used pretty regularly, uh, it could be even longer than that. Two other pieces of evidence here that you can see um, of these policies around gear being used is in the gear loan book, um, which gets filled out every single time our gear is taken out of the shed. So this could be for a class trip, this could be for uh, an individual borrowing gear to do some uh, work on their own. But any time gear is borrowed, it's recorded in this book. We're going to record the items that have been borrowed out, uh, and we're also going to record the date it was borrowed, who borrowed it, and when it was returned. And that's done every single time we borrow gear. That This document, the information in here, combined with our register of when the equipment was purchased, will let us know when we need to be looking at retiring gear based on how much it has been used. So here's an example of one of the pages in which the logbook has been filled in. So this is when I borrowed some equipment here. Um, and you can see the equipment that I have borrowed. Um, you can see the date I borrowed it on. And you can see that I have actually returned it as well, even though it hasn't had a date put in when it was returned and it's been signed by myself. The last record I want to talk about is our service record. Um, so this document um, records all of the services that our equipment has received. This could be something as simple as um, lubing the carabiners to make sure that they're operating properly. Uh, it could be flaking and inspecting the ropes to make sure that they are in safe working order. It could be looking at the interior of helmets to make sure that the um, adjustments are working fine. It could be looking at the harnesses and making sure that the gear loop is in good order as well. But every time we do a service, we fill in this book and we record the information um, that is relevant. So it could be what work was done, it could be whether the gear was put back into service or it could be that the gear has been retired and destroyed. And this is in a way that we are following the procedures around gear usage in action at Wodonga TAFE. So with the gear service log, uh, this is the information that you'd be filling in each time. Uh, we're gonna be filling in the date in which we're doing the inspection. We're gonna fill in what the um, item is specifically. So you can see in this example, we had um, a blue captive eye carabiner that was looked at on the 6th of May. We're gonna describe the damage or the fault that has happened to the particular piece of equipment. And if we know how that happened, we're gonna write, um, write the cause here, if we know that. We're gonna write down who reported the issue. In this case, this was um, reported by Luke. Um, once we actually have done the service, so you know, at this point the gear would be placed in the service box and would be kept out of service until it was inspected. We would then service the equipment um, at a date later on and we would write down the result of the service. We'd write down whether it was repaired was it, um, and put back into service or was it um, destroyed or retired depending upon what the result was. And then here you would tick the appropriate box. Basically you need to make sure that you fill in each line um, in each box uh, for each item of gear that you are uh, inspecting for a service. Um, so one of the safe housekeeping procedures when you're here at an abseil site is to make sure your rope is neatly managed. Uh, as you can see with this abseil system we've got up, uh, set up here, the belay rope is flaked out neatly where it needs to be in position uh, for the belayer to, when they're starting to dispatch their clients. But the end of the abseil line that we're not currently using is a bit of a mess here. Uh, and this would present a bit of a trip hazard to anyone who was coming up um, to commence an abseil. So we want to make sure that we tidy up the rope and we make sure it's neatly coiled and out of the way as part of our housekeeping. So, let's move on.
abseiling, whether you're a client or whether you're leading an abseil or you're just doing it for yourself, is a head to toe check. So a head to toe check, like it sounds like, is one of the first things we're going to do and we're going to be checking ourselves from head to toe. With our head, we're going to start and make sure that if we're wearing a hat or a beanie, we're going to take it off if it's not going to fit comfortably underneath our helmet. So if you've got a, um, a cap which has got like a press stud at the top, you need to take that off. Same with any kind of bulky hat. So in this case, my beanie might fit under my helmet, just to be safe, I'm gonna take it off. Then I'm gonna make sure that if I'm wearing any dangly earrings or dangly necklaces, that I take them off as well. If I'm wearing dangly earrings, like big hoops, or I've got like a necklace or a longer necklace or a pendant or a lanyard on, it has the possibility it could get caught up in the belay device when you're abseiling, if you're doing solo abseiling. Uh, and this could be really dangerous as it could lead to you choking. So you would take those off if you're wearing them. I'm out here abseiling today, so I actually made sure this morning before I left that I wasn't wearing dangly earrings or a necklace. With our hands, we're also going to be making sure that if we were wearing rings, particularly on our break hand, so for me that's my right hand, that I take those rings off. Uh, they can get heat up, heated up when you're abseiling with the friction that the rope creates when you're descending, and they could burn your finger. You could also get um, some skin caught underneath the ring. So generally a good idea to take those rings off if you can, particularly if they've got something protruding, um, like a setting that might get caught in the rope. So you would take those off. So that's our heads and our hands. We're going to then look at our clothing and make sure our clothing's appropriate. Generally, you want to be wearing a Sun Smart shirt. So you want to make sure that you've got a long sleeve shirt on and a collared shirt if you can. Today, it's looking like pretty good weather. Um, so I'm going to make sure I'm covered in sunscreen so I haven't got a collared shirt on today. But you want to generally make sure that you've got a long sleeve top on. Coming down our buddy, we're going to come down and we're going to make sure that if we've got any bulky layers on, um, that when we fasten our harness, we're going to take those layers off or we're going to make sure that the harness is fitted underneath those layers. Um, because when we fit our harness, we're going to want to make sure it's really tightly fitted around our waist so it can't possibly come off. Coming down our body, we're then going to check our pockets. We're going to make sure there's nothing in our pockets uh, that could fall out. So I happen to have some car keys in my pocket, so I'm going to take those out and put them elsewhere. Uh, you don't want to have anything in your pockets that could fall out whilst you're abseiling because uh, that could create a hazard for someone standing down below. And if you happen to have your phone, again, a hazard if it falls out, but you don't want to have to pay to replace that expensive piece of equipment. Continuing down our body, we're going to come down to our feet, to our footwear, and we're going to make sure it's appropriate as well. You don't want to be wearing thongs, you don't really want to be wearing sandals, you want to be wearing comfortable footwear that does up, that's going to provide you some grip on the rock as you're abseiling. So hiking pair of boots, great shoes to be wearing um, when you're doing these kind of activities. Runners are also okay. So that's our head to toe check completed. So part of abseiling is wearing the correct PPE uh, and a PPE for abseiling is really looking at our harness and our helmet. So let's talk about how that we fit those correctly. So let's start off with our helmet. So our helmet needs to be a rock climbing helmet. So it's, uh, you need to be wearing a helmet that's appropriate for the activity. Your bike helmet, unfortunately, not going to be rated good enough for this activity because if you're abseiling and some rocks were to come down um, if it's dislodged, um, you might get hit on the head by some rocks and that's something we don't want to have happened. And if it does happen, you want to be wearing a helmet that's rated to protect you from those kinds of impacts. So with our helmet, first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure everything's loosened off um, to make sure we fit it correctly. So I'm going to loosen the straps on my helmet and I'm going to put it on. Alright, first thing I'm going to do is make sure that it's fitted to appropriately around my head. So at the moment you can see, not fitted very well. But if I was to turn around, on the back of the helmet, there's a knob that you can turn and you can see that's now fitted much better. It's not moving around anywhere near as much. We then need to make sure we do up the buckle underneath our chin and you can see in this case it's quite loose. So potentially my helmet could still come off. So I'm going to make sure that I tighten this strap underneath my chin so that it's tight enough that I can slip some fingers through underneath. It's not going to choke me, but it's not going to like come too loose either. So I can fit some fingers underneath. Yep, that's pretty good. 
Our next piece of PPE we need to fit is our harness. So depending upon your harness, it will fit in a couple of different ways. This is a relatively typical harness to wear for rock climbing and abseiling. So we're going to put it on. Bit of a jiggle to get it on. Any tops, shirts, things we're going to wear, we're going to make sure they're tucked in underneath our harness. Um, as you can see, I started off with all my straps quite loose. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten my waist belt. Now at this point, you might think, oh, that's pretty tight. Well, actually, I want to make sure that when I push it down, it can't go over my hips. And this can slide a little bit over my hips. So at the moment, not quite tight enough. At this point, we can check. Can I push that down over my hips? No, so that's pretty tightly fitted around my waist. So when you fit your harness around your waist, you wanna make sure that the waist harness part, this bit, can't slide down over your hips. So if you were to come, become inverted or turn upside down when you were abseiling, it's not gonna allow you to slide out of your harness. You wanna make sure that the buckle is also done up securely. So some harnesses are simply like mine, where you've got a fitting like this. Other harnesses, you have a double back harness. So you need to make sure that your belt but like loop here is secured as it needs to be. So you need to check your manufacturer's um, guide for how to fit that. So mine's fine. Then you want to adjust your leg strap so that this is more of a comfort thing rather than a safety thing. The leg strap, you want to make sure it's not going to be too loose that things will get stuck in it, but you still want to be able to fit a hand down in front of it. So mine are pretty good. Might tighten that one just a tad. Yep. That's pretty good. Uh, and I'm feeling pretty comfortable with my heart helmet and my harness. So that's fitting PPE for you.